In this movie, we're going to take a look at the various ways that Photoshop represents color, specifically the RGB, CMYK, and lab color modes. And this is not only how Photoshop represents color, by the way, but it's the way that other digital imaging software works. It's the way your digital camera works as well. So we're going to start things off with RGB, and basically just about all the images you run into are RGB images because that's how they're captured by the digital cameras in the first place. So to get a sense of what's going on with RGB, and incidentally, RGB stands for red, green, and blue, I'm going to go up here to the window menu and choose the channels command in order to switch over to the channels panel so that we can see what's making up this RGB image is a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. Now, initially, if you click on any one of these channels, you're going to see a grayscale representation of the image. And every one of these channels is going to look considerably different from its neighbor. But that's not exactly how Photoshop is seeing the channels. And if you want to see things the way Photoshop sees them, then you need to go to the Preferences command, which is located under the Edit menu here on the PC. It's under the Photoshop menu on the Mac. And I'll choose Interface. And then I'll turn on this checkbox, Show Channels in Color. And you'll immediately see those channels turn colorful in the background. And now I'll go ahead and click OK. And now notice that our blue channel is extremely dark. So basically, the brightest color in the blue channel is blue, and everything else is going to get darker. Whereas the brightest color in the green channel is this very bright shade of green. And then finally, the brightest color in the red channel is red. Now, if you want to get a sense for how they mix together, then just go ahead and click on one of the channels, such as blue here, and then turn on the eye in front of, let's say, the green channel. And we can now see blue and green mixing together. I could also turn off the green channel for a moment and then turn on the red channel so that we can see how those two channels mix together. And note that we're ending up with a very purplish photograph indeed. And then if I were to turn off the blue channel and turn on the green channel, we can see how those two channels mix together. And notice that we are starting to get yellows, which may seem a little bit weird. But bear in mind, when we're working with RGB, which is the additive color space, the more color that we throw at an image, the brighter it becomes. So as we add red and green, we get the brighter color yellow. And then finally, notice that we've pretty much got the whole image put together here. It's got a little bit of a yellow cast, however. And so as soon as I turn on that blue channel, we can see the full color image at work. But the blue channel is actually making the smallest contribution to the image because blue is the color that our eyes are least responsive to. Now, the great thing about RGB is this is how the image is captured by the digital camera or a scanner or anything else in the first place. And it's also great for viewing images on displays, on anything that projects light. But if you want to print the image, then you have to go to a different color space. You have to go from red, green, and blue light to inks, specifically in the world of commercial printing, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks. And to see what that looks like, I'll go ahead and switch up here in the image menu to mode and then to CMYK color. And you can see that we're going to go from three channels over here in the channels panel to a total of four. So we've got our composite CMYK image, and we also have the cyan channel, and we are seeing these channels in color. The lightest color is going to be paper white. And the darkest color is going to be full coating of that ink, in this case, cyan. And then when I switch to the magenta channel, you can see that we have a kind of pinkish ink. If I switch to yellow, you're barely going to be able to see anything because the yellow ink is extremely light. And then we have black. Now, in a perfect world, we wouldn't need the black channel. What it does, though, that black ink helps to weigh down the shadows. So we get some nice, rich shadows going inside of the image. And then if you want to see how these guys mix together, why I can turn on the yellow channel. And you can see that's going to make that black a little more yellow. Here's what things look like with black and magenta at the same time. And here's what we get with just cyan and black. And then you can see that I can turn on the other channels 
to add weight to the colors as well. If I were to turn on all the channels except for black, you can see that we end up with some sort of grayish shadows. So you really need that black ink in order to lock things down. And the reason it's called CMYK, by the way, instead of CMYB for black, is that black is known as the key color, and so we have K. All right, now what I'm gonna do is go up to the edit menu and choose the undo command to undo that conversion from RGB to CMYK. And now we're gonna take a look at what happens if we abandon color, if we convert to a black and white photograph, what's known as grayscale inside of Photoshop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go back to that preferences command there, and I'm gonna turn off the display of the channels in color, and then I'll click OK so that we're seeing once again the grayscale versions of the image. And there's two ways to convert to grayscale. One is to just select that RGB image, go up to the image menu, choose mode, and choose grayscale, in which case Photoshop is going to ask you if this is really the way that you want to convert to black and white because there are other ways available. But in my case, I'll just say discard, and we end up with this grayscale version of the image. And notice now that we have just one channel. So we no longer have this three-dimensional color space of red, green, and blue working together. We have nothing more than luminance, which is to say we've got bright whites, we've got dark blacks, and we have other gray values in between. Now, let's say that instead of just converting the entire image to grayscale, you want to customize the experience a little bit. Well, I'll go ahead and undo so that I get back to my full color image. And let's say I click on a red channel, and that's the version of the image that I want to keep. Why then, with the right channel selected, I'd go up to image, choose mode, and choose that grayscale command again. And then what we do is we just throw away the green and blue channels, and we just keep that red channel like so. Of course, it gets renamed gray again because now all we have is a grayscale image. Now, from here, there's a couple of different ways to work. Let's say you want to infuse the image with a little bit of extra color. Well, you can go up to the image menu, choose mode, and choose duotone this time around. And that duo in duotone means two colors. And so I'll go ahead and choose that. And then I'll select one of the presets that's available to me here, such as warm gray 11 down here. And we end up with an image that isn't that terribly colorful. And that's because we're mixing black ink with this warmish gray ink. So we're not bringing a lot of color information into the photograph. But what we're doing is we're increasing the dynamic range when we go to print the image. So think of it this way. If I print a grayscale image, then all I'm going to get is at most 256 different brightness values going from black up to white. And that's just the way things work in an 8-bit per channel image here inside Photoshop. But if I add another ink, then I have another 256 colors, which means now I have as many as 256 times 256 different luminous levels, and that's a total of 65,000. So I'm going to get a much better looking photograph in print. So Duotone like CMYK, is specifically designed for commercial pre-press. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out here because there's one more option I want to show you. If I go up to the image menu, choose mode, and this time choose bitmap, then I'm going to convert the image to black and white. And in my case, I'm going to go ahead and set the method to halftone screen, click OK, and I've taken the frequency down to 20 lines per inch. That is the number of lines we're about to see here. And I am setting the shape to line. 45 degrees will be the angle. And as soon as I click OK, you can see that we end up with these 45 degree lines that are representing my artwork. So this is the simplest of the color modes because all we have is black and white and nothing more. So just two colors and that's it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and back out a couple of steps here so that we regain that RGB image. And I'm going to show you the last of the color modes. It goes by the name Lab. So you can see it up here in the mode submenu, it's called lab color. And what this stands for, just as RGB stands for red, green, blue, and CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and the key color black, lab stands for lightness plus two arbitrary color axes, A and B. And to get a sense of what that means, I'll go ahead and switch to lab. And you can now see that we've got, in addition to the lab composite at the top of the channels panel, we have a lightness channel, and then we have A and B. 
Let's see what those look like by once again going to that preference setting right down here. I'll go ahead and turn on show channels and color and then click OK. And now you can see, it, you're not going to see it very well at first, but if you look very hard here, you're going to see in the A channel that we have some greens and magentas essentially. And then in the blue channel, we have these blues and yellows. They start to make more sense if we bring in the lightness channel as well. So this is what things look like if we add lightness to the B channel. And this is how things look if we add lightness to the A channel. Now, the B channel, for what it's worth, is what's known as temperature. So it conveys all the temperature information, for those of you who may be familiar with that term. And then the A channel is conveying all the so-called tint information. And then, of course, if we mix them all together, we're getting the full color composite image. Now, the great thing about Lab, even though it's a little bit more mysterious than RGB and CMYK, is that it better represents the way that we actually perceive colors with our very own eyes. And it also gives you the option to make more sophisticated color modifications. For example, let's say I want to increase the saturation of this image. I want to make it appear more vivid. Then what I'll do is click on Lab once again, the Lab Composite up here at the top of the Channels panel. And then I'm going to go to a fairly common Luminance Adjustment command here inside Photoshop, Levels. And now I'm going to switch from the lightness channel, which, as you can see, has this big, meaty histogram. So in other words, we are covering all the luminance inside of this channel, all the way from black over here on the left-hand side to white over here on the right-hand side. But if I switch to something like A, you can see that we have a very small histogram. So only the grays are represented, as we saw just a moment ago, when we looked at the channel, the A channel, independently of the others. But let's say that I want to increase the saturation of this image, again, make it more vivid. Then I'll click in this white point value, and I'll raise it to, let's say, something like 50. And then I'll take this white value that's currently set to 255, and I'll take it down 50 to 205. And notice how we're bringing out a lot of the colors inside this image, especially these greens down here in the foliage and these reds inside the rock. Well, if we want to increase the saturation of the sky, we know that the yellows and the blues are in the B channel, so I'll go ahead and switch over to that. And I'll click in that black point value, and I'll take it up to 50 as well, and that's going to give us a lot more blues. And then if I click in the white point value, I'll take it down to 205, which is going to give me a lot more yellows. So if I turn the preview checkbox off here, this is what the image looked like a moment ago, and this is how it looks now. Now let's say I feel like I went too far with the yellows. I don't want the rocks to look that yellow. Then I just go ahead and back off that 205 value, just raise it up a little bit to, let's say, 225. And now we're letting the red of the mountains that's conveyed by the A channel show through, at which point I'll go ahead and click OK to accept that change. And I'll go ahead and hide Photoshop's interface so that I can fill the screen with the image as well. And just to give you another look here, this is how the image looked before. So not completely unsaturated, but certainly more drab than it is now after having applied some basic levels modifications inside the lab mode. And that's how you work with the various color modes, specifically RGB, CMYK, grayscale, and lab here inside Photoshop.